Hello everybody, welcome to our home. Miles and I are so thankful that we have this opportunity to bring Shabbat to you. And we believe that God is gonna give you a word of comfort in these confusing times. Yeah, that's good. You know, we're between Passover and Pentecost. In Hebrew we say Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, which becomes in the Christian world Pentecost. But it's all based on the feasts of the Lord out of Leviticus 23 and other scriptures. But it's where we see that Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world, fulfills all the feasts. He's already fulfilled yeah. the first four. And now we're in this season, yeah. historically, leading up to his soon return and the fulfillment of the last three feasts. Over these next few weeks, we're going to unpack and get into a deeper revelation of the connection between the Older Testament and the Newer mm -hmm, Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like Matthew 13, 52 says, that every student schooled by heaven brings forth treasures old and new. Yeah. And that's what we want to be. We want to be those who connect the basis of our faith, which is the Hebrew Scriptures and the Jewish world, with the fulfillment mm -hmm. in the Christian church. And we are brothers and sisters together. And God is making that more and more aware, more and more apparent yeah. as we get to the day of His return. Well, you know, I'm sure you know this, but every significant thing that Jesus did was connected to these holidays. That's why we study them. That's why we bring them to you because we know that there's a deeper meaning. Jesus was our Passover lamb. He was that one that came and that took away the sin of the whole world and that took the, the death angel. He took that judgment mm. so that we do not have to have the judgment so that we just came out of right passover and he and then that represents us being delivered from the physical bondage and now we're heading to being delivered from the spiritual bondage because the holy spirit is the one that delivers us and so it's amazing and miles is going to teach about what this 40 days plus 10 is the oma omer Oh. <laughs> Counting of the Omer, Sefirat Omer. Yeah, okay. Like she said. So here's the point. You know, we've just come through an amazing time, a, an important season. That even this last week, oh, by the way, we apologize for being absent without leave last week. We had a technical difficulty. We had challah, hallelujah, but we didn't have the technology, so we missed <laughs> you. But we're back and we're glad to be here. This last week, we celebrated Yom HaShoah, the remembrance of the Holocaust. And we also set, re remembered Yom HaZikaron, uh, just thanking those who died in the establishing of the State of Israel. Is this a political message? No. It is a fulfillment of the Word of God and evidence that He yeah. can fulfill every word that's spoken over your life. He knows you. Yeah. And so we are now in the month of your ER. We started last week. The months have meanings. The months have um, uh, specific characteristics to them. And just to, to, to bring us into this month, which is a transitional or passage month between Passover and Pentecost, we want to remember, like Catherine said, Yeshua, Jesus, was sacrificed on Passover. Yeah. He was buried as unleavened bread, sinless bread, on first, on, on first day of Passover. And then he arose three days later on first fruits, which we call, the Christian church calls um, Resurrection Sunday or Easter right. Sunday. But the point is that it's connected to the Hebrew or feasts of the Lord, yeah. where the, the sacrificed lamb, who is sinless, right. rises up on the third day, rises up on the mm -hmm. feast of Yom HaBikurim, the feast of first fruits. It's when the priests were commanded yeah. to wave a sheaf of gratitude of the Lord to the Lord, saying, thank you yeah. that you've given us the barley harvest. Thank you yeah. that we get to eat and live and be alive for this next season. And it's a time of gratitude, right. and we'll emphasize that tonight. This is a time, in spite of what the news might be saying, right. this is a time for us to express gratitude. Well, the one thing that God was speaking to me about tonight is that we need to fight for our freedom, mm. and we need to stand up for our freedom, and we not, can't let the enemy take our freedom. Or, And we need to be wise, And but we're in a spiritual battle in this time, and we need to... Uh, know those that are trying to make a power grab in this time and we need to stand with the Word of God so going back to the scripture um, it's it's so fascinating if you ever read in the gospel I think it's Matthew where when Jesus rises then then all the people that were waiting for him to rise rise too and they're walking and talking and it's just amazing miles because we're, we're in these 40 days yeah so 
Jesus counted the Omar. Omer. And so here's the thing. Leviticus 23, 9 prophesied it about the season of the crucifixion and the resurrection. Yeah. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, When you come into the land which I gave to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest before the Lord. Mm. The priest is to bring a sheaf of the harvest mm. in saying, Thank you. He shall wave the thief, verse 11, he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf. Mm. The day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Well, the day after the Sabbath would be Yom HaBikarim, or the Feast of First Fruits. So we see this month-long, three-month-long period really connecting. First is the, the month of Nisan, which is related to Ness, or which is miracles, which is Passover, right. deliverance. We have been delivered physically out of the slavery of Egypt. And then we're in the month now that started last week called ER, mm -hmm. and it's a passage month. It's a transitional month because we're looking towards the month of Sivan, which is a month of fulfillment, which is when Pentecost or Shavuot will take place. And just as God delivered us out of the physical slavery of Egypt, he's going to deliver us out of the spiritual slavery, which is represented by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. being poured out on Pentecost. Yeah. It's amazing that the month of Iyar starts with the letter Vav, and Vav is a picture of a nail or a connecting pin. And this month connects us from the Passover to the Pentecost. So we're in this place of connecting and miraculous kind of odd things happening, mm -hmm. and that's why it's so amazing that, that Yeshua came during this time to visit his disciples and apostles mm. after his resurrection, mm -hmm. before his ascension. I love it. So in this incredible time, so what the Jewish people doing was traditional is to count the days leading up to Pentecost. Yeah. Originally it was sp spoken of as counting the Omer, but really it's a symbolic picture of counting our blessings. Yeah. Between now and Pentecost, every day we're to wave a gratitude before the Lord right. and thank Him and bless Him and be grateful. Right, well, it, it also pictures back to going out out of, of the Red Sea and they had to believe God for the, the water they had to believe God for the bread here they are you know God brought them through the Red Sea but now where are they and they needed bread and they needed water and so they were called to count their blessings and that's a word for you and I to count our blessings and to trust God in these difficult circumstances not to be fearful and not to go in the horizontal realm but to go vertical and to trust him that he is taking us somewhere and that he, and that he will enable us to be his voice in this time not to be muzzled but to be his voice in this time remember this is the time of also of the pay hey. and so it's really funny that they want us to wear a mask and I'm right. going to go ahead and talk about Please. this because I believe we need to declare who God is louder and, and clearer more than ever and speak and stand up against that spirit of fear that wants to come in like a wave we say no God is above this circumstance, and he's going to bring us through. So here they are, counting the, the Omar. And, Omer. Omer. And um, <laughs> 40 days. Okay, it says in, in Acts, Acts 1, 1. And I'm going to go ahead of you. I know you're going there, but he, the, Jesus spoke to his disciples on those 40 days. And what did he teach them? About the kingdom. He said in Acts 1, 1, he took that time of giving thanks and counting your blessings and he talked about the kingdom. Whenever I think about the kingdom, we're just going to say this and then I'll, I'll let the, the rabbi finish. But what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, mm. and joy. Wow. He's telling them it's something it's something other than this realm. Mm. I'm not coming to be the ruler over Israel right now. I'm coming to teach you that I'm giving you my righteousness mm. and I'm giving you my peace my shalom in difficult storms difficult seasons overwhelming circumstances I want you to have my peace my oneness and joy I mean God wants us to be characterized as people of something other than what the world has and that is his joy because it's our strength I, I love you I'm just amazed that the, some of the things you just brought are things that are actually in my notes that I've been studying privately and working through. And what Catherine just said is that this is a mysterious time. Yeah. This is a time when God, may, may, don't judge by what you see. Yeah. This is a real time for us to walk by faith and not by sight. Because we're seeing just, just opinion after opinion. And you know what? Uh, my favorite screenwriter, William Goldman, he wrote 
All the President's Men, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Marathon Man, The Princess Bride, fantastic, brilliant writer. He said <laughs> this about Hollywood, and I would apply it to medical experts. He said, nobody knows anything. <laughs> We're all in a process of understanding. And the thing that really counts is what does the Word of God say? Right. Now regarding the season that we're in, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. Yeah. We're not account accountable for them, but we and our children are account accountable forever yeah. for all that He has revealed to us so that we, we may obey all the terms of these instructions. In other words, it's an ongoing revelation of what He's doing. Right. And if I could ask you to do one thing this, during mm. this season, which we're trying to do, which is, God, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. What are you believing? Mm -hmm. What do you want for this mm -hmm. season? Because the experts, the television, whoever, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're just men. We need the Word of God to yeah. inform this season for us because right. everything else is shifting sand. First Corinthians 4 says it this way, as Paul is saying about himself and the other apostles. He says, so look at Apollos and me as mere servants of Christ, Mashiach, who have been put in charge of explaining God's mysteries. We are in a season of mystery. There's no other way to explain between Passover and Pentecost and the fact that this year, this season, during this pandemic so-called, mm -hmm. by the way, the word pan comes from the god Pan, mm. which is a Greek god at the gates of hell in Caesarea Philippi, Matthew 16, where they would sacrifice children and have horrible events go on. And pan is where we get the word panic. Yeah. And if you noticed anything during this season, the media and other voices are trying to get you to panic yeah. and believe the lie that we're all going to die. Well, yes, we are. But we can find eternal life in Yeshua. <laughs> Matthew 13, 11 says it this way. Jesus replied, you are permitted, you, you believers, you who are about to come to faith tonight, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and others may not be. You know, there, there's a way that God opens some of these secrets to us. Mm -hmm. You were going to say something? Well, oh, no, I lost it. But go ahead, sweetheart. I'm just going to say that, you know, that panic is not from God, no. obviously. And no. you know that the enemy wants to put that confusion so that we lose our bearings. But, you know, God told me to stand fast in the liberty and to, and to decree the blessings, to count the blessings. Mm -hmm. And this, this 40 days that Jesus is teaching us, his disciples, about the kingdom, mm -hmm. and that he's taking us somewhere because he wants us to have... His power and the 50 is Jubilee so yeah. it's it's not only freedom but it's it's his restoration, power restoration yeah. and that, that's a whole other teaching for the next Shabbat yeah. that Miles is gonna bring so let me just tease that a little bit by saying when the Israelites when the Jewish people came out of Egypt yeah they faced immediate challenges we've just been through Passover and we are being challenged yeah they were challenged at the at the testing of the water, they yeah. went to Marah. Good. The water was bitter, yeah. and God gave a provision. I'll explain this and unpack it next week. But God gave a provision to Moses to make the water sweet again. So He dis He displayed Himself as Jehovah Rapha, as mm. Yahweh Rapha, mm -hmm. the God who heals. He healed the waters. Amen. He can heal your lungs. Yes. He can heal the water that's yes. in you. He yes. can transform this challenge that you're facing. The next thing that he did was at Elim, which was a garden, an oasis mm -hmm. on the way to the Promised Land. It was full of water and full of plants, and it was fantastic. And they were comfortable and sassy and happy and enjoying life, and they grumbled against God. Ooh. Next channel challenge, when we are being blessed, is also a time to be aware of, because then we can get complacent and grumble against God. Mm. Did, we, did we thank God when times were good? Yes. And the third one was at Rephidim, this is coming out of Exodus 12 into, verse, into chapter 13. Good. At Rephidim, he displayed himself as Jehovah Jireh, we say in mm. cowboy, here in California. Hebrew is Jehovah Yireh. But the idea here is that they didn't have water, and Moses struck the walk, rock, and water was provided supernaturally Amen. for them. Amen. In, in, the, in the face of our complaining against our leaders, the face of our complaining, the people get complaining against Moses, God provided for them. So the question again becomes, are we doing what the sheaf waving pictures, which is thanking God yeah. on the way to the next harvest? Yeah. And that's what God is up to.
And also I want to say that it, it's so important in this time to bring your sheep offering to the Lord. That's why, I mean, literally, we've been in Israel in the time of Shavuot where mm -hmm. they take their, whatever is whatever God has given to them, they give it back to God, whether it be a child or their first harvest, because if you don't dedicate that, then the rest of your harvest won't be blessed. Yeah. And so it's so important. That's why we tithe. That's why we bring our, our offering. That's why we bring the first and the best to God, because we believe Him to bless the rest. And so thank you for sowing into the House of Peace Ministries and Beit Abba, we thank you for standing with us as we bring this revelation to you. But we don't necessarily want it for us. We want you to be blessed during this season. So mm -hmm. we, we share this for your blessing. That's good. And, and for example, this month, we're planning a, a program of re giving to the widows and orphans in Israel. We have friends there who are working yeah. in the desert with widows, orphans, and single moms. And we're going to be sending an offering to them this week because we're in this place of like, hey, Things are tough, time to give. Things are tough, time to give more. And that's kind of how we're rolling with this. So what happens in this month, in this season, in this passage? Well, we saw what happened between for the Israelites coming out of Egypt, going towards Sinai, which we'll talk about soon. Because Sinai and Zion, Sinai, the giving of the law, and Zion, the giving mm. of the Spirit, are completely related, almost mathematically. I like to teach it on the Southern Steps in, in Jerusalem. I'll tell you about that next time or in the weeks to come. But this is the time that we have the 40 days before his ascension yeah. when Jesus appeared to his disciples. Yeah, three so, times. Then, I mean, he just keeps appearing. Some like, gospels say eight times and some say nine. But the point is that the risen Lord yeah. came to his people and said, don't worry. 40 days he ministered after the resurrection. He was right. taken up on the 40th day. He imparted individually. Yeah. He imparted to two on the road to Emmaus. Right. He imparted to, imparted to, to as many as 500. Yeah. He, he appeared to his disciples. He walked through the wall to appear to his disciples. Yeah. He follows. It's just he's transforming them from disciples to apostles. And he's doing that wow. with the presence of his own person wow. in his resurrection body before he ascends. Wow. And he gives them the Great Commission. Yeah. In Matthew 28, 18 to 20, John 20, Mark 16, and Luke 24, Acts 1, 8. He is fulfilling that which was written by the prophets Amen. over hundreds of years before Amen. that the Messiah would come and would do the things that Yeshua fulfills. Well, and I like that he appeared first to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> popular. And so yeah. it's popular. And the woman wasn't even like a righteous woman. I mean, mm. she was made right by mm. God. She was delivered of seven demons. So I want to say to you, no matter where you've come from, no matter what you've been through, no matter how the enemy has touched you, that God has a deliverance for you and he wants to appear to you in new and fresh ways and to myself in new and fresh ways in this season. That's what I'm asking him for, the God of appearance. As we go towards, we, you know, the, the giving of the law was the giving of the way to walk in life. It wasn't supposed to be a bondage. It was these beautiful lessons to give us life and to give us boundaries so we could enjoy life. So that's always what God is up to. I like to. that. You know, um, it was in Mark 16, 9, we see him coming to Mary, you know, when she's yeah. looking for him at the tomb, and she's the first one. I love that word that Catherine just brought because some of us have been delivered out of deep, deep darkness. Yeah. And so the fact that we're forgiven and that God loves us and he's granting us eternal life yeah. because of his exchange, his sacrifice of his pure blood for our impure. I mean, it's, I know it's a little Christian easy, but the idea there is this. God prophesied that there would be one coming mm. who would fulfill in the spirit what Moses did in the flesh, Amen. which was Moses was the prophet. Yes. And Moses said in Deuteronomy 18, 18, there's one arising from your midst, from the Jewish people, yeah. who will be the one that God is speaking about. And that's, of course, Jesus, Yeshua. He was seen by the two on the road to Emmaus. I have a whole se uh, session about that that's really amazing and wonderful because uh, it's, it, they're a lot like us. I'll just leave it there for now. He's seen by the apostles in John 19 and 21. And then on the 40th day, he ascends from the Mount of Olives, just the way Zechariah said he would. He would put his foot down yeah. on the Mount of Olives and he would ascend from the Mount of Olives. He, then after, and we'll get to this in the coming weeks, he's seen by 120 in the mm. upper room and then 3,000 come to faith on Pentecost, mm. on that season, in that season. Mm. We'll explain that later. So here's how I want to personalize it. Mm. 
for this season, in the midst of all the noise and the masks and the mishigas, that's Yiddish for craziness, all the stuff that's going on, we want to meet with the Lord as mm. Jehovah Rapha. We want to meet Him as our healer. He wants to heal you. Mm. He wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your body. Mm -hmm. He's provided for that. Provide. He wants to provide for you um, in supernatural ways. I know Miles and I were in that place of like, God, how, what, what? And the Lord is providing for us, and we are just so grateful. And you know, Miles and I aren't out, aren't without trials and tribulations. And but God is faithful. And I just keep hearing that little song: "Count your blessings, name them one by one." <laughs> so as we're in this time, yeah. let us do that. I mean, yeah. simple. Like I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for food. I'm grateful for um, the the ability to have a Bible and the ability to connect with people, even though I might not see them face to face I can call them I can reach out to them and please if you have any needs please leave a comment um, in in the uh, comments below and we want to respond to you we want to help meet those needs we want to be a supply for you mm -hmm. and so let us know mm -hmm. it's good Jehovah Rapha the God who heals spirit soul and body we also also wants to, us to know him as Jehovah Ra Rohi. Remember those three things that they faced, the challenges that the Israelites faced coming out of Egypt, they're for us right now. We're going mm. Passover to Pentecost. Yeah. And they met him as the shepherd. That's Rohi. Jehovah Rohi, the shepherd, the one who wants to carry you, to mm. get to help you, to make you feel like you are not alone, that mm -hmm. you're connected mm -hmm. to him. Wow. He wants to be our great shepherd at this time. And finally, Jehovah Yireh, or Jehovah Jireh. He wants to be a provision. He wants to give us fresh water out of the rock. Amen. He wants to give us the things that we need. Supernatural provision in the midst of a, a season of bad news. And I know, it, And by the way, I, I'm a New York Jew. I am not Pollyanna. <laughs> I do not take these things lightly. And I do not believe that uh, la-di-da, happy-clappy, everything's going to be all fine all the time. I think we're in a season of warfare. But it's spiritual warfare. What I got today was that this whole thing that's going on right now is 25% medical, 75% yeah. political, and 100% spiritual. Yeah. Because God is asking the body around the world to rise up as warriors yeah. and contend for right. his purposes in the earth right, right now. Right. And right. we get to do that with you. We get to do that together. Yeah. And, and the reality is that, that what a privilege. Yeah. What a privilege. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a daunting assignment. Right. But what a privilege to say, God, would you have your way in the midst yeah. of this? So we're in that season. So I want to leave you with this. We're going to go to communion in a moment. If you have some crackers or we have some Juice. bread and kombucha. <laughs> it's close to bread and wine, but that's okay. But whatever you have, let's take communion together in a moment. I just want to leave you with this, yes. these two scriptures yes. as we're on our way to Pentecost. John 6, 68. Simon Peter answered the Lord and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Yeah. And if you're searching tonight, or if you're feeling afraid, or you're, you're a believer, but you're feeling afraid, I want to tell you mm -hmm. that Yeshua, Jesus, the Bible, the, the whole Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation has the words of life in it. And the other one I want to leave you with is this, and this is a priority issue, and we all struggle with this. It's Matthew 6, 33. Seek the kingdom of God Amen. above all else, mm. above all else and his righteousness, and he will give you everything you need. And so that's the, the exhortation for tonight, yeah. is that we, you and we, together will say, God, you come first. Show me how to make you first yeah. in my life. Yeah. I want to live out of gratitude. Mm -hmm. I want to seek your face. I want to know what you're saying to mm -hmm. us about this season. Yeah, and I'm, I'm believing for big things. I'm believing that that same kind of oppression that would want to be a pharaoh to us would be swallowed up in this time. Wow. And that um, that we as God's people would take a stand for his righteousness and for his peace and his joy. And that we would take action. You know, it talks about in Daniel that those that know their God... Um, take action they do things they vote they signed up to vote so please vote and uh, please take action with people that are on the constitutional side and not grabbing for um, power mm. unnecessary power it's good so as we come to the table of the Lord we have here San Francisco ciabatta 
<laughs> and sadly, last week we had Kala, even though we didn't see oh, her. Oh, and our daughter, our, our daughter in love. Well, yeah. our, our adoptive adoptive daughter in love. Yeah. Long story. She's a doll. <laughs> anyway, she uh, made, made us a Kala. It was delish. Yeah. I, we ate the whole thing. Uh oh. Uh, sorry. Um, I ate most of it. But this is uh, it's San Francisco. It's not exactly Israeli, Yiddish, Jewish, Hebrew, but it is bread, and it's a picture. It's a picture for us of the broken body of the Lord. He gave his body yeah. so that we could be healed. He gave his body so that we can be whole, so we can be in love and connected to those around us. He said at the Last Supper, so called yeah. Passover meal, he said, this is, excuse me, this is my body which yeah. is broken for you. Mm. Take this and eat it in remembrance of me. Right. This is a word for healing. It's a word for wholeness. Mm. So when he broke it, and this is what he was doing with his disciples when he was appearing to them, he kept saying, let's break bread. Let's break bread because he's seen, this is the miracle supper. Hmm. He's seen in taking communion. He's with you as you break this. Oh boy, I hope I can break it. I have a sawzall. <laughs> okay, so Great. he's seen in the breaking of the bread. And Thank you. And he's revealed to his disciples. So, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Halom, Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you, Lord. you, Yeshua, for your broken body yeah. that makes us whole. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In like manner, after the meal, he took what was the third cup of the meal and he blessed it yeah. and he said I will not drink this with you until I'm in the kingdom with mm. you with the time coming and he said Baruch atah Adonai mm. Eloheinu melech alam bori peri hagafen Blessed are you Lord God yeah. King of the universe who creates the fruit of the vine yeah. and because of the shed blood yeah. of a perfect Messiah who is God yes. perfectly God and perfectly man yeah. because of his shed blood we are forgiven our sins are forgiven and we can live our lives looking to him until we see him face to face yeah. so you take first thank you for the the power of your of your blood lord thank you for the covering of your blood thank you for the forgiveness through mm. the blood of the lamb mm. and thank you that there is life in the blood mm. Thank you. Amen. L'chaim. L'chaim, to life. <laughs> so, that might have been very loud on your ears. So, let's just end with this. I want to say a blessing over you as we go. Yivarecha Adonai v'yismarecha Yae Adonai panavalecha v'ikunecha Yisa Adonai panavalecha v'yisem lecha shalom the Lord bless you and keep Amen. you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. Yeah. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you yeah. and give you his peace, yeah. his shalom that passes understanding. Have a great week. We're going somewhere. Yeah, we're on our way to Zion. We're on our way to Pentecost, Shavuot, and it's coming soon. So yeah. be grateful every day. Take communion every day. God bless you. We'll see you soon.